Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Lehmeduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. We greet you on this, the 24th day of the month of Jumadi al-Akh, al-Ula, from my sitting room here in the Caribbean island of Trinidad, with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is now one month since I suffered a massive heart attack and uh, by Allah's kindness, life and death are in His hands. And I was just a whisper away from leaving this world. But Allah chose to keep me alive and allow me <laughs> to come back, <laughs> to come back. And I'm now back to do what Allah wants me to do, to teach, to teach the truth. And at this time, there's nothing more important to teach than what does the Qur'an say and what does Nabi Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, say concerning the events in Gaza. So this is number three. This is Gaza 3 on this, the 24th day of Jamadi al-Ula. And we only have three months left for blessed Ramadan. Now then, our hearts, I'm receiving emails from around the world and people are, they're crying, their hearts are bleeding. What can we do for our brothers and sisters in Gaza? They have nowhere to go. And even in that hopeless situation, they're being killed. Women and children are being killed. And the government of the United States is the world's greatest hypocrite. As the world's greatest hypocrite, they stand firmly in solidarity and support of Israel, like Narendra Modi in India. We stand in solidarity with Israel, while Israel is killing women and children. Is that Judaism? Is that what the Jewish religion has taught you? Hmm? And so now there are tears around the world. There's heartache around the world. What can we do when the governments that rule over the world of Islam will not do anything to stop Israel? What, are the, what has our prophet said on this subject? Let us, in this video entitled Gaza 3, let us share with you the good news of what our Prophet has said. Allah's blessing be upon him. He has spoken as only a true Prophet of the one God can speak. And he has said that there is a Muslim army which will come to liberate Jerusalem. And he says that when that army starts to march to Jerusalem, no one, no one, no one, and nothing can stop that army. Not even the Security Council of the United Nations, which perhaps by then would no longer exist. There'll be no United Nations anymore tomorrow. It'll be gone. So it will be an unstoppable Muslim army which will finally reach Jerusalem and liberate Jerusalem. These are his words. You will most certainly fright the Jews. You will most certainly defeat them. At that time, at that time, the response to oppression will be so great that even the rocks and the stones will speak. Ya Muslim, Aza Yahudi and Waraifatala Fraktal, there's a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill him. Our Prophet is not speaking about all Jews. Not at all. How could he be saying such a thing about a Jew who is 
denouncing this government of the state of Israel as there are Jews in Israel today denouncing their own government. How could he say that about Jews who are supporting and helping the Palestinian people? Why? Because they are still human beings. These are Jews who still have a heart in their chest, not like the others who are beasts. That's right, they're beasts. They don't have a heart in their chest anymore. They consider the Palestinians to be animals. They are the chosen of the Lord God. They are born superior. And the, and the Palestinians are like cockroaches, not those Jews. There are Jews in Israel today and Jews outside of Israel who are championing the cause of the Palestinian people that they are being oppressed and they are denouncing Israeli oppression. So Allah's messenger, the Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, could not be speaking about all Jews. When he said the rocks and the stones would speak and say, there's a Jew hiding behind me, come and kill him. And so we live with this happiness in our heart that we know that the time, the end time, will witness a Muslim army. And that this Muslim army will come from the direction of Khorasan. And that Muslim army will be unstoppable until it reaches Jerusalem. But there's more now to be said. And that is that Allah has said in the Quran, He's given this warning. If you're in Pakistan, I hope you listen. He says, Ba'da uzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim Inna Allah la yugayyiru ma bi kawmin hatta yugayyiru ma bi anfusihim That no matter how hopeless your situation might be, no matter how much you are suffering, Allah, the one God, will not intervene to change your condition until you take the initiative using Allah's guidance to change your own condition. Only then will Allah intervene to help you. So if a Muslim army is going to be marching from the direction of Khorasan, then it'll have to pass through Iran. Or we already have in Iran a government which is steadfast in standing up against Israel. A government in Iran which denounces Washington as Shaitan al-Kabir. A government in Iran which has already established alliance and friendship with Russia. Yes, so we're not worried about Iran. What about Afghanistan? We already have in Afghanistan those who were born yesterday and who have grown up to be young men and who have fought Pax Britannica and defeated Pax Britannica. And then they fought the Soviet Union, the godless Soviet Union, and they defeated the godless Soviet Union. And then they fought Pax Americana and they defeated Pax Americana. So we have no problem at all about that Muslim army coming from Iran and coming from Afghanistan. But what about Pakistan? What about Pakistan? Muhammad Ali Jinnah, may Allah bless him, he did his job. He completed his mission successfully, a political miracle. He created an independent state. That's all he ever intended to do. And he did it and he died and Allah took him away. But from the day that Pakistan was born to this day, the enemies of Pakistan have ensured that Pakistan could never be free. So while India won freedom 75 years ago, and India has been able to progress and progress and progress. Pakistan has remained a slave 
all these 75 years. And no one is more responsible for that. Not so much the politicians. It is the generals in the Pakistan armed forces who have betrayed Pakistan by being Yankee puppy dogs. I was one whisper away from death one month ago. I could have been away. I could be in my grave now. But Allah in His wisdom chose that I should live. So I'm back here, so that my words may be a thunder, so that the Pakistani people would know that Allah is not going to send that army that will liberate Jerusalem and stop the slaughter and the genocide in, in Gaza. He is not going to send that army until Pakistan also, like Afghanistan, and like Iran are in the right place of being a free people because that army is not going to be stoppable by the Security Council of the United Nations. No, that army will not fight according to international law. No, the army which is going to come from Khorasan, which will liberate Jerusalem, it will be an army which will be fighting under Allah's law. And the Pakistan armed forces have never fought under Allah's law. So it is time for the people of Pakistan to wake up and recognize that you cannot stop the slaughter in Gaza until you can liberate Pakistan and recover freedom in Pakistan from those who are Yankee puppy dogs and may Allah make that day come while I'm still alive so I can return to Pakistan myself on that day. Until then I have to remain outside of Pakistan and my words will have to be like thunder until that day when Pakistan is free and liberated and then I can come back to Pakistan. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.